the downside of filming in front of a window when it's snowing outside is that I love snow way too much so if you guys see me looking sideways it's because I'm watching the snow fall and I know that my mind will wander off and that I'll stop talking and it's, it's, it's a terrible setting for a video but to ask for your forgiveness I will insert a clip of what's happening outside because it's just too magical and beautiful and I love it Hi guys, I'm Franny and welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing my December wrap-up. I read many short books in December. I don't know how long this video is going to be, that kind of worries me, but since we all know how wrap-ups work, let's just jump right in. The first book I read and finished in the month of December was And the Ocean Was Our Sky by Patrick Ness. This book was absolutely incredible i loved it so so much if you want to know more about it i filmed a video review for this book i will leave it linked in the description down below but this is an illustrated retelling of moby dick from the perspective of the whale and it is set in a world that is upside down as you can see from the cover so the depth of the ocean is the whale's sky and our world is there below and men and whales have been at war with each other since the beginning of time and our main protagonist is a member of the crew of Captain Alexandra and she fights against humans, against the humans that attack whales and I thought it was such an interesting take of the rivalry against different species or different peoples and that is why I think this book is so relevant today and I would definitely recommend it to anybody. I mean it's also gorgeous. The story is beautifully written. There were so many quotes that I just adored and if you want to hear me read some of them go to my review but I have to show you some art that is in this book because honestly it's just gorgeous. It's, it's breathtaking and I was so mesmerized by these images. I think they perfectly complement the story and the text and Patrick Ness can never do anything wrong. He is just one of my favorite authors of all times and I adore his books so much. Another book that I read in December that I don't have here with me but I did a video review on it, so again, linked down below, is Tales from Suburbia by Sean Tan. This is something that I'd never come across before because it is a collection of short stories that are written and also illustrated by Sean Tan and they are such weird but unique and very whimsical stories. I already loved Sean Tan's art style so it was interesting to also see how he writes even though I read it in Italian because I checked it out of my local library but still if you have not read anything by Sean Tan definitely do so. One of the many short stories that I read in the month of December was A Faraway Smell of Lemon by Rachel Joyce. Here there's a woman who has just broken up with her partner and it's Christmas Eve and she has to prepare everything for her children. She still has to buy gifts and such and without realizing it she enters a cleaning shop and the woman at the cashier starts talking to her and suggesting her what cleaning products she should buy and she starts showing her how she should clean and they slowly start talking about more than just cleaning products. You know how it is when you instantly have a connection with a stranger and you start talking with them about aspects of your life without being specific, you know, in a vague way, but you still discuss important topics. That's exactly what happens in this book. And there's a lot about the importance of tiny things, you know, those little small gestures that we most of the times take for granted but they're actually the most valuable thing that we have in our lives especially when it comes to people that we love and that we care about how we do not always tell them how much they matter to us and it was just the perfect short story because and I was just surprised at how good this short story is because it is short you know it's a short story it's around 50 pages I think but you get a lot about the characters about their background about their personality I mean you get everything that you need 
to understand the situation and to understand the struggle that the main character is going through. So you don't need, it started snowing again, you don't need anything else. You don't need more and you don't need less. You have everything you need and that's what makes a short story perfect. It doesn't leave you wanting more, but at the same time you got exactly what you needed. You didn't get less and you didn't get more. Does it make sense? And it's also a perfect short story for the Christmas time. I know that Christmas has gone, but you know, this is what TBRs are for. So put it on your TBR for next Christmas and I'm sure you'll love it. Another short story that I read was The Crooner by Kazuo Ishiguro. This short story belongs to the Nocturnes collection, but the Italian publisher that publishes Kazuo Ishiguro's books in Italy decided to publish this special edition of this specific short story and it is illustrated and it's absolutely gorgeous. I think that the art style that was used perfectly complements the tone of this short story. I think it was just perfect. It is set in Venice so you get just the Venetian atmosphere I think I guess. See what I mean? It is just I loved these illustrations so much. Okay, that's enough. You saw enough. This is about an immigrant who came to Italy. He plays the guitar in Piazza San Marco in Venice, St. Mark's Square. This singer hires the main protagonist, whose name we never find out, and we also never find out the country he comes from. Um, the singer hires our main protagonist to play um, the guitar while he sings to his wife a serenade. And from the very beginning, you, along the narrator, know that there's something not right about this serenade. It's not just a romantic gesture, but there's something bittersweet and sad behind it. And throughout the short story, you find out what that is and what's the story between this singer and his wife. And I just loved everything about it. Once again, it was the perfect short story because you get everything you need to know to understand what's going on and there was sentiment, there was emotion and it was a bit sad but that was to be expected because in music nocturnes are very melancholic and sad melodies. I knew what I was getting into and I loved Kazuo Ishiguro's writing style and yeah, it wasn't a disappointment at all. Then I read Winnie the Pooh! I finally read it. I am a bit late to the party since I'm 23, but still. Um, I really, really enjoyed this book. I was actually surprised at how this is definitely a book aimed at children, but at the same time, there were just tiny bits here and there that are kind of life lessons, and not even good ones. I mean, they're good life lessons, but they're not happy ones. If that makes sense, for instance, there's a conversation between um, Winnie the Pooh and Ayor, and they're my favorites. And Pooh asks Ayor, um, why? What's the matter? And Ayor replies, nothing, Pooh Bear, nothing. We can't all, and some of us don't. There's all there is to it. Can't all what? said Pooh, rubbing his nose. Gaiety song and dance, here we go round the mulberry bush. And that's a universal truth, you know, because not all people can be happy all the time. Not all people are able to do that. So, you know, it was it was very interesting. I'm so happy that I finally read it. And yeah, just, I really, really love this one. Then I listened to the audiobook of The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, narrated by Stephen Fry, and of course, written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I really liked this collection and it was interesting to see how each story of course is different. You know, there are different mysteries that Sherlock Holmes and Watson have to solve, but at the same time it's always the same thing, you know, always the same structure that repeats itself over and over again. But I, I didn't mind, I liked it and I loved how Sherlock Holmes and Watson were always the same throughout all the stories. Like, there's not much room for character development because, of course, they're both adults, you know, and I just, I, I don't know, I really liked it. It was the same thing over and over again, but I really liked it and I just love how just brilliant Sherlock Holmes is. I just, the, the things that he notices, 
it's just incredible. And my favorite short stories were definitely a scandal in Bohemia where you get to meet Irene Adler. Then there was the Boscombe Valley mystery which was very interesting, I did not see that coming. And also there was another one that I really really liked, what was it? The Adventure of the Blue Carbuncle, that's the Christmas Sherlock Holmes short story that everyone reads during, you know, the Christmas time and of course I had to read it as well. I'm listening to all the Sherlock Holmes books on audio narrated by Stephen Fry but I read The Adventure of the Blue Carbuncle in Italian in, you know, a book. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I read it, I didn't listen to it, that's what I meant. And it, it's interesting to see how it changes. You know, the translation was... it, it, it had a different feel, maybe? I don't know how to explain it, but it was it was interesting to like to experience that, I guess. Um, yeah, and that's it. Those were my favorite short stories. I think I'm looking at the titles because I don't remember all the titles. No, wait, there was another one. Which one was it? Also, the the Red Headed League. That was that was interesting too. And yeah, I'm looking forward to listen to all the other Sherlock Holmes books because he's just awesome. We're nearing the end, I think. I still have two books to talk about. Oh my god, the battery is dying. In December, I also finished to listen to the audiobook of Before the Devil Breaks You by Libba Bray. This is the third book in the Diviner series and it's the last book in the series that is out because there's a fourth book coming God knows when and that does not sit well with me because after the end of Before the Devil Breaks You, I need the fourth book now. Like, I refuse to wait a year or more to have the sequel because I need to know what's gonna happen to my babies, okay? This book was just... it was incredible, okay? It was such a roller coaster. I knew it. I knew it. I told you after I read Letter of Dreams, I think it was in my last wrap up. I wasn't a fan of Letter of Dreams because I thought that it dragged on a little bit too much. It was slower. It wasn't as exciting. It didn't feel as dangerous as the first book had. But I knew that it was setting up a lot of things for the third installment in the series. And it, I was right. I was right about that because hell broke loose in this third book. I don't think I can tell you anything about the synopsis because it's the third book in a series so that'll be a spoiler but there are some characters that are diviners, they have powers such as being able to foresee the future, being able to walk in dreams and become invisible and there are ghosts that are coming back to haunt people and there's one man behind it all, he is the man in the stovepipe hat and he was terrifying and he was mean and this book Okay, this book was, I know that I'm not making any sense, but I just cannot talk about this book without getting all agitated and excited, so I'm sorry about that, but this book, it was violent. It doesn't shy away from hard topics, like there was a scene, and this is a trigger warning, there was a scene where, I don't want to say that a rape was described, but there was a flashback of a rape, and you as the reader were in the mind of the victim of that rape and that scene was was hard to listen to okay there was not an explicit description of what was happening but there was an emotional description of what was happening and that was hard to listen to okay so trigger warning for that and there was talking about racism and nationalism and nazis and there was just a lot because it is set in the 1920s i'm, I'm sucking at describing this book i'm so sorry but another thing that i loved about the way in which it was written is the fact that you get multiple perspectives right and you have more scenes in this book where all the main characters are together as a band of misfits and you get to see the same character from different perspectives and how this character interacts with different people and the character changes and that was more faithful and realistic than what I could have imagined because we do not 
interact in the same way with everyone. We are not the same. We don't behave in the same way with everyone we know. We have a different relationship with each different person that we know. So every time we interact with someone, we are the same, but our interaction kind of changes, has different shades, if you know what I mean. And that was in this book. And I, perhaps it's something small, but I don't often see that in books, that portrayal of human interactions. And that's another reason why I absolutely adored this book. I just, I loved everything about it. I don't know what else to say. Please, please pick this series up because it is totally worth it. It's not your typical YA series. It's just so much more and there's so much food for thought about, you know, racism and religion and prejudice and different cultures and just, there's a lot, okay? Please, I beg you, pick this series up if you haven't. And if you can, listen to the audiobook because General Lavoie, as I've said, I don't know how many times now, but she is a great voice narrator, a great voice actress. I love her so much. She deserves all the praise and the love in this world. And the last book that I was able to finish, thank goodness, in the month of December is Melmoth by Sarah Perry. I read those 30 pages that I was missing and uh, just, okay, in theory, I should have loved it for many reasons, but I didn't. And that really surprised me. It is a gothic novel, even though it is set in present days. In theory, I should have loved this book because of its premise, because of how it's written, because of the literary devices that are used within it, but I didn't. I think that perhaps it's because it is too slow and it's written in a way that is very detached and that was done on purpose because our main character committed was a crime, it was something that she has to punish herself for and therefore she moved to Prague from England and she does not allow herself any pleasure, any luxury because she has to punish herself so you have this very cold and detached character and the writing style reflected that. So it was done on purpose and I can appreciate that as a reader. Also in this book there are letters and manuscripts that of course were made up by the author but they were there and I usually love books when you have different forms of storytelling and there was this one literary device that the author used and that I was impressed by. It is told in third person and it mainly focuses on our main protagonist Helen Franklin but there were parts where the narrator becomes omniscient. For instance it tells to us readers if we were to look where Ellen Franklin wasn't looking, we would have seen this, this, and this. And, and that was interesting, that was nice, and I really liked that. But as a whole, the story just was too slow and stilted for me. Perhaps I just didn't feel the horror and the attraction at the same time that gothic novels should have on readers, that particular hold of mystery and fascination and at the same time repulsion that gothic novels have. I don't know, but I, I didn't tell you anything about the synopsis, like, oh gosh, I'm doing such a good job. We have this woman that is punishing herself and she has a friend that brings to her a manuscript of an old man who saw Melmoth. And the book revolves around this myth of Melmoth. Melmoth is one of the women who first uh, witnessed the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but after a while she denied ever seeing that. And from that moment onward, she wandered the earth alone with bloody feet and witnessing all our sins and all the things that we are ashamed of, all the things, all the bad things that we feel guilt over. And our main protagonist at one point in the story will start 
seeing Melmoth as well because of, oh my gosh, there's a bird, oh my gosh, it went away, it flew away, sorry, I wanted to show it to you, but I, I cannot, because birds fly. Um, what was I saying? Helen will start seeing Melmoth and it'll become an obsession because of this thing that she did in the past. I just, I don't know, I didn't really care for it. I also met the author and she was so nice. This book is actually, um, you know, signed by the author. Um, but I really wanted to like this book and I also wanted to read The Essex Serpent because I know that that book deals with religion and I love books that deal with religion. But after reading this one, I just, I don't think her writing style and her storytelling are something I enjoy. They are good, okay? But I don't think they're for me. Yeah, th this is it for the wrap up. I, I don't know how long it was. I know that I've been sitting down filming for an hour. So yeah, th 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 this is gonna be fun to edit. But yes, I hope you enjoyed watching this rambling long wrap up. Um, let me know if you have read any of the books that I've mentioned, if you would like to read them, what you read in the month of December, what was your favorite read of the month of December. I don't know what my favorite read was. Well, perhaps I do know. Do we all want to say it together? This this was kind of bound to be my favorite book of this month because it's also going to be... Yeah, I'm gonna stop there. No spoilers. Um, so thank you so much for watching this video that it was just all over the place. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'll see you soon in my next video. Poor hugs.